In this lesson, I'm gonna teach you the four bar counting technique, which will help guide you in knowing when to hit play on the next track that you wanna mix in. Let's dive in. All right, so let me show you what I mean by counting. I'm gonna hit play over here in our track in deck one, and then I'm gonna count. Here we go. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, and one. Okay, so I stopped playing the track on a one count. But why did I count in that weird way to begin with? Is it because my math is so bad that I can't count past four? Well, I'm not that good with numbers, but there's a really important reason why I counted that way, and I want you to listen closely. I counted that way because I was counting beats and bars. Almost all of the music you'll be DJing with is in what's known as 4-4 four, four time. That means there are four beats in one bar of music. Again, each bar of music will have four beats. One, two, three, four. That's one bar. Now, I was also counting in chunks of four bars. And that's why you heard me counting this way. One, two, three, four. That's one bar. Two, two, three, four. That's a second bar. Three, two, three, four. That's a third. Four, two, three, four. That's the fourth. And then I start again at one, two, three, four. That style of counting helps me mentally keep track of which bar I've reached so I can count four bars repeatedly as the song progresses. The reason for this is because the big important things in a song almost always happen on the one count or the one beat. The first beat of the song, for instance, happens on the one count. Let's try counting our demo track. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now at the one count, the bass line kicks in. That is a big, important development in the track. Let's try another song. I'm gonna load another track that I've got here. Mm, let's check. How about going back to this track? And let's start counting. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, three, four, and one, two, three, four. Again, at the one count, suddenly the bass kicked in. That's a really important development in the track that we've got over here. And you're gonna find this pattern repeating throughout this song. Something important always happens on the one count. If you listen throughout the song, you'll find that the most important things happen on the one count. It's gonna be like the breakdown, the drop, the start of the vocal, and so on. So, let's use what we learned here and try mixing these two songs that we've got in our sound pack. Just gonna go back to the playlist that I made. And let me just load this track again. Here we are. I'm going to move on over near the end of this track, probably around this point over here. Let's have a play. The ending or outro of a song is a good place to mix out of a tune, and I can see just by looking at the waveform above in the virtual deck that there is an outro coming in. I'm going to explain in the next video what this all means, so don't worry about it just yet. Now I'm going to disable headphone cue on deck one and enable headphone cue on deck two so that we can hear deck two in our headphones. Again, headphone cue should be enabled on the deck that you're preparing to mix next. Okay, cool. So I've still got a cue point placed here in deck two at the very, very first beat of the track. That's awesome. 
Now, before I hit play on either of these tracks, I want to make sure that the tempos are matched. At the moment, they aren't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the sync button and voila, the tempos are matched. They're both at 124 BPM. Now I'm going to hit play on deck one while counting four bars. And then I'm going to hit play on deck two when I go back to my one count. Here goes. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, and one. There we go. Cool. Now I am going to line up the beats. There we go. Sounds good. When they're lined up, I'll move the crossfader from the left deck to the right. fine-tune a little bit. Awesome. Smooth mix there. Right, so let's stop this first. So we just did three things here. First, we made sure the tempos were matched. Next, we hit play on deck one. Then we counted four bars before hitting on deck two. And then we finally line up the beats using the jog wheel on deck two. Our mix is now smooth as butter and the big things that happen on the one count happen simultaneously for both tracks because we counted using the four bar trick. So what we did just now is called phrase matching because not only were the beats and bars lined up in those songs, but I made sure they fit together structurally as well. Don't worry, I'll make it clear what I mean in the next lesson. For now, I want you to repeat exactly what I've done here so you get a hang for counting in beats and bars, and then I want you to try mixing two other songs from your DJ library together. I'll see you in the next video. So what we did just now is called phrase matching because not only were the beats and bars lined up in those songs, but I made sure they fitted together structurally as well. Don't worry, I'll make it clear what I mean in the next lesson. For now, I want you to repeat exactly what I've done here so you get a hang for counting in beats and bars. And then I want you to try mixing two songs from your DJ library together. I'll see you in the next video.